Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for joining the latest in the monthly webinar series, Data Architecture Strategies with Donna Burbank. Today, Donna will discuss building a data strategy, practical steps for aligning with business goals. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. And we very much encourage you to chat with us and with each other throughout the webinar. To do so, just click the chat icon in the bottom middle of your screen to activate that feature. And for questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag DA strategies. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the recording of this session and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you the series speaker, um, Donna Burbank. She is a recognized industry expert in information management with over 20 years of experience helping organizations enrich their business opportunities through data and information. She currently is the managing director of Global Data Strategy Limited, where she assists organizations around the globe in driving value from their data. She has worked with dozens of Fortune 500 companies worldwide in the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Africa, and speaks regularly at industry conferences, including the upcoming Enterprise Data World. Um, and with that, let me give the floor to Donna to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Hello. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everyone who joined. Uh, it's always a pleasure to do these. Um, and so just to give a little um, preview into what is upcoming later this year and what we've already had. So the number one question I think Shannon might agree that we always get is, will this be recorded? And yes, Dataversity keeps all of these on demand. Um, so if you missed our last month's uh, webinar on emerging trends in data architecture, that is all available on Dataversity website, as are all of the past ones for the past few years. Um, and then next month we'll be talking, we have a case study from one of our uh, clients, the Environment Agency of England on data modeling, which I know is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. So just wanted to make sure folks knew about that and hopefully you can see us on a, an upcoming webinar. Um, but today's topic is a hot one and we always get a lot of interest when we do things on data strategy. Um, in fact, any of you who are coming to Enterprise Data World in Boston, as Shannon mentioned, uh, I have a workshop on data strategy where we have some similar content, but also we get into some workshops and, and things like that where you can do a little more hands-on. So, sales pitch over. <laughs> so, but today, one of the reasons why data strategy is is popular because a more companies are becoming data driven, but that can be also very daunting. And so, there's a lot of interest of how do I take such a daunting task and just break it down into something that, that's reasonable. Um, so hopefully what we're trying to do in this webinar is that yes, the, the executing a data strategy is, is a challenge, but it shouldn't be that complex to put together some of the very, the basics. So uh, some very concrete practical steps is the goal of this webinar. We obviously cannot build a data strategy for you or with you in one hour, but hopefully a couple light bulbs will go off. Um, if you've heard me speak before, you know I'm a big fan of uh, frameworks and templates and, and just kind of some of the building blocks you can think of as you build a strategy for your organization. So I'm a, I'm a data person. We love definitions, right? So uh, what is a data strategy? Good to, to think of that. Um, but also, not only do I love definitions because I am a, a writer and a data person, but we often get that question, just what, what do you even mean by strategy? And is that really, how is it any different than what we've been doing all along with data management? So I went to good old dictionary, Merriam-Webster, um, and I thought I'd just go back to the definition of those two terms, and I think the answer is in it. So if you look at a strategy, we have things like a plan towards a goal. I had to put some of these that I found a little funny, actually. So a complex adaptation for achieving evolutionary success. Well, you know, that sounds like maybe that doesn't have to do with data because we're talking about metabolism, but actually it does. In fact, one of the clients I was speaking with, Shannon, I'm a, one of my Latin American clients, and, and the name of their initiative is their data evolution strategy. And because it's not as if he, they hadn't been doing data before, but now they're looking to become data driven and they're looking to have that evolution. Uh, other sales pitch, they'll be speaking with me at, in Boston. <laughs> so if folks want to hear more about that, we'll be at EDW. Um, the other part I liked about that is that it is a complex adaptation. It's, it's taking what you may have been doing all along. Now, certain things don't change, but certain things do. Um, so how do we take advantage and why people's brains rightly hurt is that there's a lot of exciting changes in data management right now. 
So how, how do you take advantage of these new um, new technologies, but not not lose some of the foundations that we've known and loved for years, right? So it is a how do you adapt what you've been doing? The other piece I liked about the piece in the left with strategy is that it's a science and an art, right? So I think there's with anything, we're talking strategic, we're taking big picture, we're talking vision. Yes, there's some scientific principles, there's some templates I can walk you through, um, but I, I think some of it's the art, and, and I, I will probably focus in this presentation um, maybe more on that art part than maybe we're expecting, you know, always thinking of with data management, because the more I do these and the more gray hairs I get, it is it's so much how you sell it and how you message it and how you jump on the right bandwagon and do the right strategy because there's a lot of things we can do with data management, um, but it's, it's doing the most valuable things. And so <laughs> this was, again, some of the things I highlighted might confuse you, but why meet the enemy under advantageous conditions? Well, there's a lot of enemies out there. There's the enemies of completing priorities. There's the enemy of budget. There's sometimes other competing groups may feel like enemies, right? So we've got the other team and they're competing for the same budget. So how do we, uh, we join with them, hopefully, and join forces. So, yeah, I don't want to think of data strategy as a military operation, but I guess some, sometimes some of those tactics can actually help with your strategy. But I think when you read through strategy, you sort of get the idea. It's goals, it's plans, it's visions, it's adaptations and, and science and art. When you look at the management, it's the judicious means of accomplishing an end and the art of managing and supervising and just sort of running things, you know, which is very valuable. A lot of us on the call are probably in management. And I sort of hope people are managing our budgets and our data and things like that. The reason I put these out here though, is I think us, we in, in data management tend to err on the side of management a bit too much, um, which is good. As I said, I'm, I'm hoping with GDPR, someone's looking at privacy rules. And I'm hoping when I'm managing customer data, someone's looking at um, the fact that we have a single view of customer and that we are, you know, have this in third normal form, right? But I, I think sometimes we are, are the fuddy-duddies in the room and we always sort of come with the negative. Well, we can't do that because, or did you worry about this? And yes, we need to worry, we need to manage. But I think some of us in the call, myself included, often go right to the techie solution or the risk or how we manage which of course we have to manage this way. We're in data management, right? But I think some of us, it's a good thing to think of can we put our strategy hat on? And, and how do we, I, I work with a, I'm lucky enough to work with a lot of executives around the world. And, and often when I speak to the C-level, almost a defining factor of, of that level is they're looking for opportunities and visions and how can I make my company successful? And the more you can tie in with their vision and how you can support that rather than why we can't do something. And I just, sometimes they don't want to talk to IT or data because they're going to tell me I can't do something. And it's, you're right. It's getting the right balance between that. You don't want to also overpromise and build the world and that 360 view of company customer is going to happen next week. Of course not. But I think in, in the balance, um, when we're thinking strategy, I think the difference is in that vision piece. Of course, you need to manage as part of a strategy, but it's thinking long term, it's thinking strategically, obviously, and it's thinking kind of the business value. So I know I spent a long time in that slide, but I think it's a good theme as we move through this is to me, that's the difference with strategy. And I do get that question a lot. What is data strategy? Haven't we been doing that forever? It's called data management. That's the DM block. Well, yes, um, but also it's more than that. So a little more, and you may have seen the slide if you've joined my uh, presentations before. Uh, this is our framework at my company that uh, we use to really have it's sort of the Zuckman framework for data strategy, right? What are the boxes you need to fill in? And you'll see that it starts with business strategy. And, and again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The reason I am in data still is partly because it's become so aligned with the business and so much of technology can help drive the business. It's, it's not an either or anymore. I think business people are becoming much more technical. So this idea of we have, we have, IT, we have tech and we have business or that person isn't technical enough or all of those kind of words, I think those lines are blurring. I also think, you know, tech people being put in a box and go code and come back later is, is also going away. And that if you think like a business person and you want to take initiatives forward, you know, the door is often wide open. And because I think, um, again, why I'm on a plane a lot is that I think a lot of executives are looking for someone that can really help explain data in a way that is practical and makes under, you know, people can understand. So I, I see more of that happening in my 
my role uh, of the business and data being in the same room. In fact, I'm planning a workshop right now with my client where I am today, and we're, that's exactly what we're doing. And, and, and both sides are often surprised. I, I think often the business is surprised how much the data people get their business. And if you've heard me speak again, you know I'm a fan of data models. And what I love about it is I can, building a data model, I almost know more about that company than the people who work at it because you ask all the leading questions. So often the data people do know a lot about the details of the business. And vice versa, often the data people are sort of shocked at how technical the business people really are. And they do get data. I mean, data is that kind of piece that it, it, it is not owned by the business and it is not owned by IT. So that's sort of the level one of we must start there. Why are we doing this? What's the top-down business strategy? And then as we sort of, if we start from the bottom, kind of that level five, yes, a big part of it is how do we look at what the data estate is? What data do we have? Is everything nicely, cleanly in a, in a relational database? That might be great, um, but maybe do should we be looking at other sources? Should we be looking at social media data or video streaming or uh, taking call logs and voice to text and, and doing some advanced analytics on that, right? So never sit still, obviously. Um, or it could be the other extreme um, where maybe everything's in a spreadsheet or in documents. And how do we get that into a more structured format or probably all of the above? Um, so taking a realistic view of what you have, uh, what you should get rid of, and what you should maybe add to your repertoire is a, always a big part and why a data strategy never stops. It's an evolving process because what can be stressful but are either exciting or stressful but our industry depending on your mood or the day is things change so fast i feel stupid every week that, that there's some new technology that i now have to learn and get up to speed on which is exciting but yeah there's a lot to keep up with so if if you're using the same technology only that you've used 20 years ago you may start to look around this is some exciting things but then the everything in between if we kind of move up and maybe go from the level four um, how do you even integrate those different data sources? So how, how do you literally integrate? Do we want to do ETL batch processing? Do we want to virtualize? Do we want to move things to the cloud? Big decisions there. On the left, do we even have an inventory of, of what we have? And you know, plenty of organizations don't. I don't, if you ask me today, and maybe you are being asked for a GDPR or something, if you ask me today of where all of my customer data lives, I could not answer you, and, and that's okay to say in this call because we're all friends here <laughs> on the same boat, but I guess uh, many, many co customers, companies, and clients across the globe cannot answer that question today. So just getting that inventory and, and getting a metadata management structure to how do I get that source of, of what I have, how it's tagged, how it's labeled, what's the security risk, super important before you do anything else. Well, at level three, it's what I call, Wes, where you're starting to leverage data for strategic advantage. So things like master data, getting that 360 view or single view of customer, BI and data warehousing and analytics, you can't do any of that if you don't have good data quality or if you don't have good architecture. And so all of this ties together. The analogy I often use is, you know, whenever a, a, an organization comes to me and, and, and needs help with any of this, I always pull up the slide and look at all of it because people might say, well, I have a problem with data quality. Our addresses are wrong. Well, do we have a governance in place? Maybe that's what's causing the data quality. Or is there metadata to manage the definitions for data quality? Sort of like you go to the doctor and you say, you know, your shoulder hurts. Well, my, my shoulder hurts because my hip is out of alignment and I'm walking funny and therefore my, you know, everything like the human body is connected. Um, or maybe you're stressed and you have a headache and, you know, it's not always the cause uh, that you think. And so we need to look holistically. Uh, that, that line between governance and business, uh, the technical the business is data governance. And that is, is often one of the more important pieces of people are complicated. If we think data is complicated, people are even more complicated, right? So how do we get people aligned together um, with similar definitions, that elusive, what do we even mean by customer? And again, I told the story. I remember when I was a youngster starting out in my 20s with data management. And I was at a, I think it was a DEMA conference, actually, a data diversity conference. Um, and someone told that joke in the room. We're trying to get a single definition for customer, and everyone laughed. And I said, well, how hard is that? I think I know what a customer is. <laughs> how naive I was, right? Is it a prospect? Is it a lead? Is it a, is it a you know, gold star customer? Is it a lapsed customer? Is it a customer on support? You know, anyone who's on this call trying to do that, it's very complicated. And that's a big part of governance, but it also ties with metadata architecture, et cetera. So um, we can talk about policies and data governance processes. The piece on the right, culture, is often the biggest piece. Um, of how do we all agree that we want to work together? You know, sometimes there are silos, maybe not for malicious purpose, sometimes, um, but often it's just people trying to get their job done. 
And do they see that when they're getting their job done, it affects other people? And maybe the data you're putting in, you don't use, but it's being used downstream. So I would say a strategy, if you came across, if you came out of this webinar with one piece of advice you can go back to as often as a slide like this. Are you touching, when you look at your strategy, are you looking at all of these pieces? Are you looking at why we're doing it with the business? Are you looking at how we're doing it with your processes? Who's doing it with governance? You know, what we're managing? Is there metadata? And I almost just do a checklist of, of where we are in each of these, these roles. Um, the other part I talked to briefly, but it's worth stressing, the exciting part about doing data strategies or anything with data today is, is that it isn't an either or. So the business strategy obviously guides your data strategy. And, and think of this carefully. Are you trying to, as many companies are, trying to do a digital transformation? And we're doing a sea change at our company. We, we were I'm working with several customers now that literally they are doing paper and, and pen with some of their processes. And they're doing a massive jump to switching that, you know, basically scrapping their existing processes and moving everything straight to digital. That's huge, um, but that's a big change for what you're going to do with data. Similarly, sometimes it's the data you have that can guide your business strategy. And some of the leading, I talked a lot about this in the previous webinar in January, a lot of the leading organizations in the world today are data companies. Think of Google, think of Amazon. Yeah, they sell stuff, but really they're a data company <laughs> where they make a lot of their money is because they manage their data really well. So uh, it, 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 they both inform and guide each other, uh, which I think is again an exciting time to be in data management. Um, where to begin? Um, and I often have not, if you've been to any of my sessions on data strategy, I often have not put this in because we actually use this uh, full disclosure in our consulting practice when we do a, an assessment. Um, but it was asked so much, I didn't want to seem salesy, um, but a lot of people found it helpful because you can do the same steps, right? So generally, and we do this fairly quickly, you know, a strategy shouldn't last forever. You know, we, we might take six weeks or you might be able to do it, you know, a, a short period of time. Don't skip it though, though. I wouldn't skip any of these pieces. So the first piece is just understanding business goals and strategy. Now we have some tools and templates, some of which I will share with you today, uh, where you can do this yourself. Uh, what are our business motivations? Why are we doing this? And every, we know the motivations of each group, not just ours, but other people. How does that map to our data initiatives? What do we want to do with that? The second column is, is a, a current state assessment. Um, and I would say that's uh, both from where you are in a technology, but also a governance and culture. Um, and look at that carefully. So it's not only where you are, but where you want to be. And, and not everybody has to do a major sea change digital transformation. Maybe you just want to get the mailings for your marketing campaign right <laughs> to get data correct. So, you know, be realistic here because that's going to define everything else, which aligns to your future state. And, and we look at for future state like the previous slide holistically. Is the right, is, you know, and we've seen all of the combinations of, of these in our engagements. Maybe the technology is fine. We have all the technology we would need, but there's no governance structure in place. People aren't working together. We don't have the right roles and responsibilities. Or maybe everyone's, you know, we have the right structure and everyone's eager to work together, but the technology doesn't support us. We need to really modernize or we need to maybe not modernize because that's sort of the first thing people jump to, the new technology. Maybe we need to manage, you know, that old fashioned, I sort of scoffed at management, right? Do we have metadata in place? Do we have lineage? Do we have a definition of customer published in a glossary? All of that. So, and then we go to a roadmap. And again, some of this does say most of this will take time. You're not going to do a seed chain digital transformation or data strategy in a day, but there's certain things you can do quickly. And I think part of it, when you think of a culture change in an organization, it's things like governance and metadata, and master data, and all of that can sound really academic, especially to business people. So I've found if you can do something quickly in, in three months, a month, six months, depending on what's fast in your company, because every company has a different pace, right? So show how it works. And, and we're, we're working with a couple companies now where, you know, one, one company, we actually had a long time in the negotiation process. He kept saying, I want to do a a pilot, an MVP. We kept thinking he wanted like a dashboard. He's like, no, I want a governance MVP. I want to show how governance could fix something quickly. Um, because he's right that the, the, the show do you show how doing this the right way works? Because we're going to face the, oh, that's too hard. I have a deadline. I can't do data right. Well, you know, the old saying, if you don't have time to do it right, you have time to do it again. So we know that long term, um, it will take longer, but people have deadlines. So can we do something in three months, six months, two months to do it, um, to show some value? 
you know, it, it's going to be different, but look at that carefully. And, and if you can get ROI, one of my uh, nonprofit clients actually had a great example. What they did was uh, clean up a donations database where they had did the data quality before and after. They did some address augmentation and literally they were sending out a campaign so they could do easily met, e- easily uh, do some metrics. And they were able to calculate a $30,000 increase just with that one data cleanup effort because the people they cleaned up the addresses donated money. I said, you know, maybe that's not a lot in your particular company for this nonprofit it was, but it was just so, you know, easy to pinpoint the cause and effect in that case. So other things like that you can look at that have ROI you can look at. And then never forget the communication and evangelism. And so, so often we, we have that success and we move on to the next thing. Um, but don't forget, not everybody is thinking about this every day. So how do you sell your successes? How do you market yourself as an organization? Uh, you'll see the little slide there. One of the clients we worked with was basically selling information management services. How we can help you across the organization? Did you think you're starting a project? Come to us. Um, and often that's you know, part of the job as well. So those are kind of, again, the building blocks of, of how you might move forward on this. So if we kind of move through those levels we had in that kind of first you know, framework slide, um, again, these are just things to think of. Each one of these could be a full webinar. <laughs> so uh, we'll just kind of move through to give you hopefully some ideas and some light bulbs as you start to execute in your company. Um, the first one is the idea of business motivations. And that might be something you know. Um, I'm a big fan of models and architectures. And so you can architect anything. We're architecting motivation. Um, and the, how this works, and this is obviously a fictional company, you know, start with your, do you know your company's mission and vision? Sometimes it's written on the wall. Do we ever look at it and pay attention? So everything you're doing as part of your data initiative should tie to that, um, especially if you're trying to sell this up to executives. They live and breathe this every day. They probably wrote that mission and vision. So that it's near and dear to their heart. And then look at business drivers, both internally in your organization what's hot you know is it cost savings is that the biggest thing maybe you didn't make your numbers and cost so go to the execs with cost saving is it innovation and cost isn't so important because we're a startup and we want to just show value and talk about innovation so make sure you're aligned with the business drivers of your company and then also look externally so too often we're you know we go to nine to five or longer every day in our company and we obviously have blinders because that's what we're looking at what are other companies doing you know, are we building our brick and mortar store? And meanwhile, everyone's gone digital and we sort of missed that wave. You know, that's the last thing you want to do. And then define goals and objectives very tactically for your data initiative. And almost, you know, I'll say it's sort of a marketing slide. What is governance in this case? It was a governance slide. Accountability, quality, and culture. Something people can get their brains around because starting with, hey, we want to create a data governance framework probably isn't going to get people all that excited except for nerds like us. And nerds is a good thing. <laughs> but uh, not everybody thinks so. So, you know, how do you tie it back to the business? Um, and just on that note, yeah, I mentioned this in the beginning, um, but when you do that successfully, um, it's a great time for data professionals to have a seat at the table. And, and because so many people want to be data driven and someone that can speak data and someone that can speak business and, and, and the corporate culture, the, your career will, will work. And they, often I hear some of people complain, oh, how come my, my project didn't get funding and theirs did? Well, I'm sure when you ask that question in that tone of voice, <laughs> sound like my mother now, um, you weren't expecting an answer, but I will answer it. You know, think of that. Think of the reason of why they got the funding and you didn't. Did they, did they tie to a, the marketing campaign that's coming up or the new product launch or so much of it, um, you know, you can say politics in a negative way, but it's politics in a positive way of go where the company's going um, and the funding will follow. Right? Um, so um, I, I talked about this already, but it is good to think of, you know, what are those levers or levers? How do you pronounce that word depending on where you live? Um, what are a lot of things we can do in data management? We could work 24 hours a day managing data. We will never be done. This job security, right? But better job security is finding something that you can have that value quickly. And I see data as that fulcrum. If if we had bet, think of that nonprofit. If we had better data for our marketing campaign, we will get more donors. And it came true. And now when they're trying to look more funding for other things, people get that and they can see. So it might be small, it might be big. Um, we had one customer that actually had gotten some fines for our, it was over a million US dollars and they were able to solve that. So that was a huge win, right? We can't all see those. Um, so they might be smaller ones that you can find. 
So another kind of framework you may want to use, and again, these are all you know kind of like uh, laundry lists. That, you know, not, none of these is brain surgery, but kind of putting them together in an easy way. You know, kind of you're the pilot in the cockpit, and yes, you've you've flown the plane a million times, but are there similar checklists you go through so you don't crash this time? Um, so hopefully some of the things we've put together to help you not crash can help you. So you just think of it as three obvious columns, right? What are our business drivers? Often I, I find these from things like the, the company report and the annual report or um, a company strategy. And if you don't have a company strategy, you do your best guess. What are you thinking in the companies? Where are they headed? You know, you, you've been in the business. You probably have a good idea. So what are the key business drivers? And then what might be challenges for supporting those jet drivers, right? Is it because we can't get a single view of customer? Are there process and efficiencies? We're working with a, a big manufacturing company. For them, it's all about process. It's a manufacturing process and how can data be a part of process? So again, the challenges will be unique to your business. A lot of them are similar. Some of the ones, these are all hypothetical, sort of taken from random customers and put into something generic to protect the innocent, but I'm sure you recognize some of these, right? Like some of these will happen everywhere. We always have information silos. We all, you know, it's just how we sort of break those down. And then very specifically, what are your objectives around data? We want to get a single view of customer. We'd love to have better lineage. You know, it's, again, think more strategically. We want to collaborate and have discovery. My new way I'm often doing governance is less about the governance telling people what to do and just getting the right brains in the room and collaborating. Because the things of what the definition of customer is, that'll come out in the wash as you brainstorm and you'll find out as you're trying to do a project, you have a different definition of customer. So yes, you need rules and regulations, but if we can get people at the board with on, at the table through collaboration, it just, just works a lot better. We're all human beings. We'd rather be excited about something than told what to do, right? So hopefully that's kind of a format that might help you that we do this in a lot of different ways, you know, visually, um, but the basic when it comes down to is what are we trying to do? Why can't we do it? And, and what are we going to do with data to fix that piece in the middle? So, and again, we're running through all of this at a, a quick pace, but just again, things you can go back to. And then the other question we always get is, are the slides available? And they are. And again, this is all recorded. So don't feel you like you have to take screenshots or, or detailed notes. Um, it'll all be available after the fact. Um, but these should just be things you should go back to later when you're building your strategy of, did we check some of these boxes off? So as we get to uh, culture and people and process and governance, again, I think this is the most important part. Maybe not, because if your architecture crashes, right, that's not going to work. But maybe the part people don't think enough about in, um, in the data world is this part of the stakeholders. And this is the cartoon from one of my books, but I, I often feel like a data therapist. And, and people will say at the end of the day, as I've been, you know, nine to six back-to-back -back interviews about data, are you tired? I said, oh, I'm probably one of the few people on the planet that loves to hear your data stories, right? So, because it often feels like a therapy session. Tell me about your data issues, right? Um, but what you get in these interviews and do them, I mean, we do that because we're a consultancy. We come in, you can do that in your own company. And, and don't just talk to the people you know, um, because you're doing several things. A, you're getting information about their goals, maybe why they're silos, what their, um, you know, what, what their initiatives are. And so you're, you're also probably getting champions. We always find someone when we do these interviews that no one realized that they were just psyched about product and component data. You know, and think your governance, those are your future data stewards or data owners. They're there, and they're often very excited to finally have a voice. Thank you. We've been wondering for someone to come get this. But, you know, on the, as those are the white hat and the black hat, sometimes you'll find people, body language is, you know, key, arms crossed, they're not so excited. Well, that's good to know. You need to sort of work with them. And generally, maybe one in my whole career, um, have just been difficult people to work with. Generally, their arms are crossed because, they have another initiative they're being, you know, held accountable for. So can you tie into that? And again, most people don't wake up in the morning and say, I want to, you know, be difficult for data management. That, that people don't really think about data is probably the worst that you get. So um, it's a big part of making sure, A, you covered all the bases and understanding people's motivations and getting allies. And um, often, again, some of these people will turn into your data stewards and owners. So again, when you look at governance, just like, and again, this can and is a whole webinar of itself, this frameworks for that. So some of them are similar. What are your business goals and objectives? We don't just do governance for governance sake. Often when we're brought in to help 
fix a failed governance. It's because they did just that. Well, we've got the committee and we have all the meetings and we've got, but, but what, 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 what are you trying to fix? What are you trying to do? So we talked a lot about that already, um, but do you have the right organization structure in place? Do you have the right processes in place, the data management culture, and, and then the tool? So it's all of those, take away any of the pieces of that house and it'll fall. So they're all important. Um, something that You'll be relieved to know I'm not going to read through in detail, but again, it's something you can, um, if you download the slides, and listen to a little helpful checklist. What does each of these mean? You know, what, what does it mean to have a clear vision and a strategy? You kind of covered that. Is it aligned with your business goals? What does it mean for the organization and people? Y yes, we need an org structure, um, but are people with their, in their HR reviews held accountable for data? One of my clients we're working with right now that actually they're clinical psychologists and they're they're actually being held accountable for the data metrics they're putting in about their clients. So again, not typically what you think of as governance, um, but that's their day-to-day -day governance. Uh, again, the manufacturing company I talked about, their governance quote is data is now a stage gate in their manufacturing process, right? So all of that um, can make sense. So processes and workflows could be two things. It can be the data management processes and the business processes. And you need to think about both. Uh, data management and measures. Are you looking at the right data? Are you focusing on the right data? And do you have data quality statistics so you know how much better you're getting? Do you have data models in place? You know, this is probably the biggest column we're most familiar with in this call. Culture and communication is huge. You can do everything else right, but if people aren't bought in, um, it's not going to be, again, not bought in because they're, they're hateful to you. <laughs> Probably they have other goals and everyone has a day job and it's generally not data unless data is in their title. Or it is data, but they haven't really thought of that, that what they're doing every day is data. Um, so actually I have to get off track. So the customer I met today, where we will be speaking at, at uh, EDW, Enterprise Data World, so if you're there, we just, we just finalized this morning a video and it's a, it's a manufacturing company or they're selling building materials products and, and basically that was one of the themes of the video is no matter what you're doing from loading the truck to selling the products to doing the invoicing that's data and because people didn't get that they actually have internet of things from the trucks so you're a truck driver delivering cement you're doing data <laughs> whether you thought about it or not so you know think of that in your culture um, and then the tools and technology and we talked a lot about that so uh, again this is governance specific do I have data models? Do I have a metadata catalog? Do I have a metadata repository? What's the difference? You know, think of all of that and you can't have, again, take away any of these pillars, probably not gonna be successful. Um, and generally when we do a strategy, we come in and look at that. Yep, you've got the organization in place, but do they have a vision? Yes, you have the organization in place. Do they have the right tools to manage data? Yes, you have the right tools, but is there a culture for knowing how to use them, right? So kind of look when you're doing your strategy, do you have all these? Are there gaps in ones? Did one of these I didn't think of? Often it's culture. Um, and then actually, uh, Len Silverstein, I think he's going to be a B2, he's a, also a Colorado like me. Um, and one of the, he also is another a data person that talks a lot about culture building. And he gave me a good piece of advice in one of his presentations, and it was, have we thought of our own motivations? What's my culture? Are we enforcing our thoughts, which we tend to do? I've got these great new projects. How come everyone isn't excited? You know, well, because are you the only one you know really think back and answer that question you are one of your own stakeholders as you go through um and do this assessment because we all have our blinders so when we do a strategy and you do a strategy um i haven't mentioned it yet but i should if you're not familiar with the dama dm book or data management body of knowledge great resource so a lot of the things in the previous slide you know what is a data governance organization structure or what, what does that mean People have done this before, right? So that's a, a great resource. But I will be the first person to say, even though I was a contributor to that book, look at it and then throw it away. Because where I've also seen failed uh, governance is they read the book and they say, oh, it says we need a steering committee. And, it, and then it says we need, well, I mean, that's a guideline. You need some sort of governance organization that steers governance, right? But if you, again, if you take that too literally, maybe steering committees often have a, that's not your corporate culture, right? So one of the companies we work with, they had governance as part of their product launch. Life, it was a stage gate in product launch. Is the data right to support this product from the bill of materials to analytics afterwards, et cetera. So be creative here because, again, governance can be fuddy-duddy anyway. And don't add to it by creating another yet another committee. Uh, so think strategically. And all those stakeholders I talked to, how do we tie that into their day job? 
Um, is it a top-down culture where they need people need the executive support before they can do anything? Is it more of a federated culture where the fact that someone's telling them what to do will you know, raise you know, bristle people's um, attitudes? So you think of that again, that where things tend to fail. I'm trying to give you a quick of things that we've run into before. This is a big one, and, and why uh, thinking of this carefully can be good. The other piece, on the, that was the piece on the right. Um, the piece on the left. It's just from an organizational planning point of view, you can't do everything with data. So where does data map to your organizational capabilities? So this is again, an anonymized protecting the innocent view. In this case, it was more of a um, manufacturing type company and they had the different from plan to make, to move, to sell, to serve their customers, right? So highlighting where is customer data used across it? Where's product? Where are the pain points in red? Where are we okay in green? Um, because as you start to build your governance organization or your data management or your anything linking back to what organizational structure is key. So um, these are sort of enterprise architecture artifacts, that one on the left. Um, but as you've heard me again talk before, I'm a big fan of that blurring between enterprise architecture and data architecture, especially when you're looking at a strategy, because how do you not look at the enterprise? I mean, you need to look at the business capabilities as well. Um, when you're looking at data governance and stewardship, thinking of how you do the steward. So if, if the previous slide was more about how we set up the organization structure, we, do we have a committee? Do we jump on the bandwagon of another committee? Do we, et cetera, et cetera. These are the kind of people in that picture. How do we set up governance uh, owners or stewards or custodians or whatever you name them in your organization? This again, some industry standards in the DM box, but Often that's what we customize. The name is the last thing we should worry about. It's what makes sense to you. So how we do this makes sense uh, is important. Of of again, what is your cultural uh, way of doing things? So process centric would be maybe I'm the steward for the claims process or the billing process, the manufacturing process. Again, manufacturing is one where process is a very important part of the organization, and aligning data to that process can make a lot of sense. System centric, it could be that you are the steward for the CRM system or the billing system or the you know, data warehouse. Um, I will caveat all of these that none of these is ideal um, because you're, you're, I think true governance has pieces of all of these put together, which I'm sort of jumping to my punchline of that generally it's some sort of blended model. Um, but I, cause I don't want people to sort of say, why well, you should not build governance around systems and you shouldn't, you should have a business view. That said, often I, I often have, you know, kind of a business level, maybe the claims process person is the business data owner or the steward. And then you often also have a system data steward for the billing system for the claims um, because both are the reality. You do have systems with certain business rules and you certain have a business with certain business rules and often they don't match and that's where these problems come up and so you need someone who knows both. Sort of the ideal if you read the textbook in, in a perfect world is the data domain centric and I've, I've actually argued with people at DEMA conferences on this because so much written is just yeah well you have a student um, data owner or a customer data owner well good luck finding one owner for customer I, I say from the real world with many battle scars and that doesn't necessarily make sense you know so I'm, I'm working with a big um, hospital right now and who owns a patient gosh I hope no one person owns a patient right there's the billing for that patient there's the medical record for that patient there's the um, you know the follow-up and the home care for that patient there's the legal for that patient so there's pieces of patient I, I think to also to do this well um, you need a very good data architecture so you better have a data model and you better have your metadata around customer or patient or student or any of those to do that well I do think that would be the ideal in a perfect world and even when you break it up, that there's different elements for customer, I often do that by attribute or by data entity around customer, and you can't do that without a good architecture. So again, that's sort of, I would say in my, my world, that would be the preferred, but it also has to be realistic. And the other piece of that is the orientation of the, the business organization. Is it finance or is it marketing or is it clinical, you know, depending on your organization? It could be geographic reasons. It could be because the European, and you're already seeing the complexity of this. Um, so that's where things like these committees come in and I'm doing something around customer. Wow, that's going to be billing and, and sales and regional because we handle customers differently in every region. It's gonna be, so that's where kind of that blended model comes in of that you may have ownership, 
buy one of these and then the committee looks at all of them or maybe there's one owner with both of these. Again, think of this carefully, but this is again a, a checklist that kind of can help you think of some of the ways of, of doing this. Um, okay, on the, the running along and the super, super fast strategy, um, in this general level of kind of leveraging data for strategic advantage, that's kind of your data management. It would be an easier way to think of that. I'm a big fan of, of using a maturity model. So other question that always comes up is where does this come from? This is ours and we sort of start with things like the DMBOC and the CMMI as kind of guidelines, but we customize it for our battle scars or experience of things that really work. So again, again, yes, you need a, a governance committee, but what do you do in that committee and what are this, how are decisions made? And so we get nerdy detail, a couple hundred questions, but there are others out there. And I think, I think uh, CMLI is one that they have a, a sort of a lower cost one, you know, to have them come in and do it. Obviously they're experts can be more, but there are some ones you can sort of download yourself. You know, if you're a Gartner client, they have some tools you can look at. Um, or you read the DM book and you kind of look through and say, am I doing these things, right? So you can have an expert come in, you can to get some things online, you can sort of DIY, do it yourself, a DIY, I guess. Um, but in any case, look, or you can use that template I have in the beginning and just say, are we doing these things? So however detailed you want to get on this, do it. So when you do it, think, where am I today, realistically? No one's looking at this but you, so don't lie. Um, and then where you want to be. And both of those are important um, because, you know, maybe I, I don't need to be the next Amazon. I'm just trying to get my campaigns out. You don't need to be, a, if this scales on one to five, you don't need to be a one and, you know, a five and everything. And sometimes when we advise clients, in some cases, we're actually saying you're, you're overdoing it. You know, you're Okay, Donna Burbank is actually saying this, that some people might do too much data architecture and data modeling. <laughs> it does happen. Not usually, because I love it. But um, and usually that's where there's gaps. But in some cases, you know, you don't need a third normal form, detailed, physical, logical, conceptual model with metadata lineage and data stewards for every piece of data in the entire organization. You will get nothing done. So in some cases, you may be overdoing it have so much process in place, there's too much governance, or maybe on technology, I'm buying, I have six different BI tools and they're all cool. Well, that's too much. It's not helping you, right? So there are cases where you may want to back off. And the guide is what you want to do as a company. Um, so, you know, uh, that, that should be what you think of when you do a maturity assessment. Um, and again, that has to do with the balance. And if you've been in one of my workshops, I always get interesting answers of this because neither is good. Are you so academic and you, you, you know, and we all can, if you're in data, I could look all day at a data model. They're kind of fun to do. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things. I like to ski too. I'd rather do more of that <laughs> than data models. So you can get over academic and then nothing gets done because you argue. Um, actually, I... If you've ever worked with me, I tend to be, we just joke around. And one of my clients, we were just arguing over whether it was something with a hierarchy or a relationship. And I'm like, Mike, why do you care? And we kind of stopped. It's like, yeah, why do I care? We don't care. We just were getting academic. And it was sort of that dope slap of we're just arguing about a model. Nobody else on the planet cares. Move on. And so sometimes that's a good thing to do. Um, and then Wild West is you're not doing anything. And I've worked in those environments too. Got to get the product out now, stat, you know, and, and or maybe stat you were, a, you know, I, we work with one organization that had a um, kind of a 911 type help desk with people's lives were in order. And, and those people had a pass. You didn't have to have a valid address um, if someone's dying at the other end of the line. We'll get that later, you know. So, but if you don't have a plan in place and nothing gets done, it's going to be chaotic. And so what's the right balance of that? That's the business value. You know, do, is it a, I don't know, a, a clinical pharmaceutical company where, yes, people are going to die if we don't have the data right, unless we should be more on the academic side? Or um, are we just doing a proof of concept for a new widget we're developing and we're going to throw it away? We just want to do some testing. Maybe that's more on the Wild West side. So you, again, that's, that's your your guide on your business value, but just give that one some thought of where you need to be on your spectrum. Um, and again, I can't go through all of this, but one of the things I, I do when I look at a strategy, I look with the customer, are we using the right tools for the right job? And this often when I'm seeing a strategy is where things fail. So the obvious one in the strategy, strategy am I doing each piece in the right area that I need to? Um, am I doing advanced analytics? Am I only doing descriptive analytics? Do I have, you know, data models in place? Do I have a golden record for customer? All of that. But also, 
am I using a hammer uh, to put in a screw or a screwdriver to bang in a nail, right? So I, I too often, and you can't necessarily really blame business people who read the, the news and everyone has a data lake. Well, what do you need a data lake for? You know, well, we want to say, you know, total sales by region. Well, that's a warehouse. You really don't need a lake, right? Or we're trying to use the wrong tool for the wrong job. So often in a strategy is making sure you have the right things and that you're also using the right things in the right way. I know that's obvious. Again, a lot of this is, but um, often putting it together in a framework of what are we doing and is this is this the right tool or are there other things we need to, to do to have that? Um, just quickly, again, and this is also the data integration piece. There's a lot of way, and this again, can and it is a full webinar, but how do I integrate? This is master data, but this could be any type of data integration. Do I need to centralize all my data in one place when I say I need a single view of customer? Or can it be more of a virtualized later layer? E either way, I often see too many companies say, oh, I'm just going to virtualize it as an excuse for not doing the hard work. <laughs> you still, whether you virtualize it or point-to-point or -point integration or whatever, you still need that hard stuff, which is the semantic meeting and the data quality standards and all of that. So you still need to look at that. Um, and, and good integration or MDM or anything is that mix of people, process, culture, everything I've been saying all along, but particularly master data. Um, and often, you know, when a master data problem fail or project fails, uh, it's generally not the tech, it's usually the governance around it and the process. And, and do we talk to the people and how they're entering the data and a lot of that. So Gartner has a good report on that as well. The main reasons MDM particularly fails is generally around governance and process and less on the data architecture. Um, so moving on again, the, the sprint, um, how we coordinate and integrate some of these sources to me is sort of that metadata layer and integration layer. But think again, I guess a lot of us in the call are also often thinking about the technical in integration. Do I put it in a lake or a warehouse? Do I have APIs that access the apps or do I do, but don't forget that a lot of the reasons for integration mm -hmm. is on a business, is it a merger and acquisition? And it's not just about the data, it's also about the organization. We did a big merger between, we, we helped support a big merger between an insurance company that was in the UK and the US. And half of that effort was doing the organization structure mapping to the data. And yes, we had to also do the data mapping, but first, and I showed you an example of that type of model earlier, we had to start with the org because it's, you know, is their finance the same as our finance and is their actuarial doing things in the same way? So now look at that as well. Metadata, near and dear to my heart. Um, we have presentation. There's also a course on data diversity um, on, on metadata. Uh, lots of different ways to do it. Just do it. <laughs> so um, in some ways, and think carefully about this. There are enterprise metadata catalogs, metadata repositories. They can be great especially in the world of GDPR, uh, definitely take a look at this. And there's a lot of great out-of-the-box tools. You should not be doing metadata by hand uh, unless you need to because there's a lot of tools that can automate this. But you may not need, I for many years worked for one of the vendors for a big metadata repository. And often what people were doing in that big over a million dollar implementation, they could have done in a data modeling tool because what they were just doing was relational databases and structures. and you know, there's so much uh, overlap between these tools nowadays that, you know, what a data modeling tool is sort of, they have metadata capabilities and some of the catalogs have kind of, you know, modeling type structures and there's glossaries in each. So again, with this, just kind of look at the various pieces and see, am I doing it? Um, and then think in what tool, but don't go for the tool first, just because there's a lot of tools out there. You don't always have to go for the most expensive one. Um, just quickly to the new sort of metadata repository was the traditional way of doing it. A lot of the new tools out there are more of a catalog, and I see a catalog as more of that sort of collaborative way of doing things. You know, the usage ranking and, and uh, crowdsourcing and things like that. Definitely take a look at that because it is a nice way to get kind of the realistic view of the organization. And my analogy there is if the metadata repository is an encyclopedia, um, that is where we have the vetted source of truth and the and the more sometimes the catalog approach can be more of a Wikipedia where people are doing brainstorming. Um, both are valid with different use cases. And but think of that carefully when you look at a tool. I've seen customers go the wrong way either in both ways. They're trying to get a single GDPR lineage and more of a collaborative tool and they weren't able to lock it down well enough. And some people were trying to get collaboration and a repository that was just too rigid. So give some thought to that. Um, 
And then just quickly on that bottom up of management of inventories, definitely these metadata repositories that I just talked about, one of the big advantages is it helps you give that inventory because if you don't know where things are and a lot of them have automated scanners where you can say, wow, this is my, you know, one of my customers had this legacy system, the DB2 or something or other that nobody had used and they didn't even know. And then when they were able to reverse engineer with a metadata tool, you know, eyes were open to what was actually in there. So they can be super helpful. I would say the business side of that, I would, this is obviously a spreadsheet type mapping, but do a map of who's using it. Um, obviously, there can be some eye openers too. Of can we? And again, this is a reality. Often, it's the finance system that, yep, it's using the legacy system, but there's so much financial logic in that, and they have it maintained and funded, and we're just going to not touch that one. <laughs> Sometimes politics trump other things. So, um, or in terms of prioritization of funding, you know, who's using these? So, in this case, you'll see that Oracle is used by pretty much everyone across the board, and then you know, leadership's using. Click, maybe we need to keep that because it's a leadership team. <laughs> we often have to be <laughs> realistic, or do we need to convince the leadership team that maybe everyone else is using whatever template in this case? These are just examples, uh, not favoring any product over the other, but just take a look at kind of usage patterns as well. Um, and data models, as I mentioned, can be a nice way to not only have the inventory like a metadata repository, but they can be active. When you make a change in the model, you can also forward engineer onto the database platforms as well. Um, this I will just go through quickly through, but the, the takeaway, and we are, I've said this in other, other presentations, but I mean it this time, I think it's going to go out, Shannon can correct me, I think next week or so, uh, the new survey, um, but this kind of shows the trends of what people are using today, a lot of, unfortunately, still some spreadsheets, um, a lot of relational databases, and a lot of legacy still, and of course, big data. Um, as you look to the future, not only is, is more moving to the cloud, um, and uh, gladly less fewer spreadsheets, but I think you'll see that there's just more um, diversity. It isn't all just some peaks is spreading out, and I think that's actually a good thing. So when you are looking at your data strategy, are you lo look just take a look at these types of lists? Is everything in relational, or do I need to use a graph? Those are great sources for trying to kind of get some knowledge um, linking across the company. Am I using big data when I haven't? Are there Internet of Things? Even though you're, you know, uh, any sort of company can probably, you know, insurance is using Internet of Things to get feedback on their customers. It isn't just things like manufacturing and tech. So take a look at that. That the takeaway isn't to go detailed into this, but just as a big part of your strategy that have kind of downplayed um, the focus on the business side. But this is huge. Are you looking at the new technologies that are out there? And if not, maybe start to do some proofs of concept. So building a roadmap, putting it all together. The quick takeaway is, and I talked about this already, of, of pick a business win. Is it something like an integrated customer view? Take that list of people you talk to. Who cares? With integrated customer view, probably a lot of people. Marketing, sales, customer support, the execs. Good thing to start with. And then what initiatives can that support? It's going to help with our strategy. It's going to help with governance. It's going to help with both uh, legacy things and things you need to do, um, and also some shiny things. Can we throw in some open data in there and social media to get people excited? So it's a mix. Do the foundational. Also do some of the, as I like to call, shiny things or innovative things. And then also get the right people involved. And then don't forget to continually communicate because if you don't, if you don't, don't skip one thing, don't skip the communication. We start small and talk a lot about it because people take a lot of time to adopt these things. Which kind of ties into this, the long-term success, not just, yeah, we launched this, now we're on to the next thing, continue, continue training, lunch and learn, speak at conferences, you know, get the word out even beyond your company, talk to other people. This example is an example of a service catalog I showed in the beginning of, of selling the information management services across your organization, how we can help you, right? So, to have a newsletter, uh, jump onto the company newsletter, et cetera. So to sum up uh, the key steps, and we kind of talk through, but again, this can be sort of a checklist. Do we have the right support from the executive, um, either talking to the executives and or aligning with their vision? Have we talked to everybody in interviews? Do we have the right business case? Are we focused on the right data? Do we have an understanding of our own maturity? And then what we need to fix to that maturity to map to what we want to do as a business? Is the, is the organization in place from a governance and execution perspective? And then what can we do quickly that also, and this to me, I would say the key, what can we do quickly that's also building towards an architecture? Not, you know, everyone can move quickly nowadays. It's frustratingly fast. 
how can we do it the right way and show that that is valuable and then communicate. And just before we open it up for questions, which you can either uh, type in the Q&A and, and Shannon will read out. Next month, as I mentioned, is a nice case study uh, at the Environment Agency. Um, there is an article that's an oldie but goodie. We've got a lot of hits on which talks about this that Data Diversity did with me in September of 2017, but it is out there uh, for your reference if you want to know more. And this is us. We do it for a living if you need help. <laughs> and I'll open it up for questions, Shannon. Donna, thank you so much for another fantastic presentation. And to, as you said, let me answer the most commonly asked questions. Just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email to everybody by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording from this presentation. And we've had comments and questions coming in, Donna, even uh, uh, just as we started, so I love it. So we got lots of questions to get to here. Uh, in the contemporary days of Data Lake, is if a medium-sized enterprise um, would like to start their journey on what is the, advi what is the advice for them? Uh, for data links, I would say initially um, make sure you need one, right? So um, generally I would say a data lake is great when you're trying to explanatory analytics or you have unstructured data sources. I think often two people quickly go to a lake when they don't need one. Um, nothing wrong with a warehouse when you need a warehouse. I would think there's a lot of cloud-based solutions um, out there where, where you can try to easily um, – it's great because you can a throw it away if it's not working for you. You can scale up very easily, and then you can you can you know start small. And if it works, scale out so you don't have to buy the servers and do it all yourself. Definitely look at some of the cloud-based initiatives, and they have some also great training online. You know the vendors are getting really good now with their training um, that they can really help you get up to speed with that. And Donna, how is a data strategy different from data management? Oh, go back to slide two, or maybe I hadn't covered that one when they asked the question. Um, so yeah, that's probably the best way. Strategy is more, I would say, kind of business driven and, and big picture and vision, where management is almost, you know, like management of everything. I'm making sure the ducks are in a row, and I'm keeping things managed, um, but I see that as sort of less visionary and less business led. So with new client levels, do you start from level one or level five, or do you do both? Um, sure. And I'm just that last question. I really I should have just gone back to the slide. So we did kind of talk to that in the beginning. Um, and then the other now that I know how to move my slides um, for the level question of level one to level five. Excellent question. You definitely do both. Um, and I generally start with the top down and then I sort of do the bottom up and then you sort of meet in the middle um, and you need to look holistically. It isn't an either or. Um, so um, you can also do them in parallel. It's not like you have to do step one, step two. But if you were to start with any step first, definitely it's the one because that's the why. You know, it could be, you know, we have no business need for data and then just don't go any further. I doubt that's going to happen. Um, but it helps kind of set the focus for everything else, if that makes sense. So I sort of go one, five, and then two, four, three, maybe. <laughs> that would be a way to think of it. For a, large, uh, for a large global company, how much time is realistic to develop a data strategy and roadmap? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. I mean, we, 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 when we come in, we can, but we're very focused and we come externally and that's all we do for, you know, a large company, maybe eight weeks or something, I think is, is, you know, I wouldn't go too long, much longer than a few months. I know some of the, I'll, I'll slam them, the big consultancy will do six months. I'm like, how much, how long can you do a strategy for? You know, so I think you have to keep it small enough and then I would say revise it. So uh, here's my advice on that. So you can do anything fast. Let it breathe long enough that you talk to the right amount of people. I think that is the part that's going to take the longest um, actually, one of my larger clients that that did actually, I just knocked those people, but it did take us six months because it was, so, we had to do so much selling globally to all the, and we had to be very careful politically, and it took us six months just to get buy-in. I think that's an extreme case. I would say, make sure you talk to everybody and do it in a few months and then iterate um, just so that you're showing uh, value, but do, don't rush it and try, oh, I know all this stuff. I could do it in a day. I, I could probably write up a strategy in a day. Where I wouldn't get things right is did I did I take the time to look everywhere? Is there a database I didn't know that existed? Are there people I hadn't talked to? Right. So I would say a few months is a uh, probably a nice average. You can do it faster. We've done them in a few weeks. If if everything is already built, I think that's the other part. Maybe you've got an excellent business strategy and you already have an excellent documentation of everything else. So I hope that's a good answer with some caveats that make sense. 
I love it. So, uh, But that does bring us to the top of the hour. Unfortunately, there's a lot of additional questions, but I'll send those over to you, Don, if you want to take a look at those additional questions that have come in. Um, mm -hmm. And just a, a reminder again, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for with links to the slides and the recording for everybody. Also, as you mentioned, we, are, we will be opening the survey actually tomorrow um, mm -hmm. for the new research paper, uh, Trends in Data Management, and it'll be part of what we call March... Um, um, data Education Month. We declare March the whole month Data Education Month, a celebration of. So uh, we'll be, there'll be lots of good things going. You'll be able to find the link to the survey on our website tomorrow. So, all right, all. Well, Donna, Great. thank you again so much. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. I love all the questions coming in. Well, I'll get those over to Donna, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. Bye.